hello and welcome to a new episode of uh, Space. No up, no down, no atmosphere or sounds and incomprehensible distances. Somewhere in the Milky Way, a spiral galaxy like this one, there is a normal G-type main sequence star, which the inhabitants of a planet around it have named the Sun. Around it there are several planets, which we now want to have a closer look at one by one every week. The planet closest to the Sun has a distance of 58 million kilometers and a diameter of nearly 5000 kilometers. It is the smallest of the eight planets and moves faster than all the others around the Sun, in only 88 days. Its orbit is not a perfect circle with the Sun in the center, it has got one of the most eccentric orbits of all the other planets. At its farthest point from the Sun, the planet's distance is two-thirds greater than at its closest point to the Sun. Seen from Earth, the planet has never a greater distance than 28 degrees from the Sun. This means it can only be observed when being just above the horizon, before or after the Sun is in the sky, outshining everything. The Hubble Space Telescope cannot observe it at all, because it cannot be pointed so close towards the Sun. The earliest known recorded observations of that planet are from cuneiform tablets by an Assyrian astronomer around the 14th century BC. The name he gave it can roughly be translated to the jumping planet. The ancient Greeks called the planet after Hermes, herald of the gods, for its quick motion. The Romans named the planet after his counterpart, the Roman messenger god Mercurius. So in most countries we know the planet as Mercury. The astronomical symbol for Mercury is a stylized version of Hermes Caduceus, his wand with the intertwined serpents. In 1859 there was a French mathematician and astronomer that noticed some unexplainable movement in Mercury's orbit. One of his suggestions was that another planet might exist in an orbit even closer to the Sun. Because previously also Neptune has been found due to strange movements in the orbit of Uranus. So they named the hypothetical planet even closer to the Sun than Mercury Vulcan. Unfortunately no such planet was ever found, but it definitely would have been awesome. People thought for a long time that Mercury was tidally locked, meaning one rotation around its axis every time it goes once around the Sun, like our Moon does with Earth, always showing the same side. Later Italian astronomer Giuseppe Colombo found out that the rotational periods have a relationship of 3 to 2 rather than 1 to 1, meaning that the planet rotates on its axis exactly 3 times for every 2 revolutions it makes around the Sun. Somebody standing on Mercury would therefore see only one day every 2 Mercurian years, which is about 176 Earth days. Standing on Mercury, the Sun would therefore behave strangely in the sky. Mercury really looks a bit like Earth's moon, with lots of craters. It has been geologically inactive for billions of years. There are no tectonic plates, so craters stay like they are. It has got no moons and is itself smaller than the largest moons in our solar system, Ganymede and Titan, but it is more massive. The Sun is about three times larger in the sky and nearly seven times brighter than on Earth. But there is also hardly an atmosphere, therefore nothing to retain the heat. Which means surface temperatures vary from minus 170 degrees Celsius at night to 427 degrees Celsius during the day. Although the daylight temperature is extremely high, ice, as frozen water, exists on Mercury. On the floor of deep craters at the poles that are never exposed to direct sunlight. Mercury is totally metal. Approximately 70% metal and 30% silicate rock. Mercury's density is the second highest in the solar system, only slightly less than Earth's density. But as it is smaller, the gravity on Mercury's surface is about 38% of Earth's. 
geologists estimate that Mercury's core occupies about 55% of its volume. For Earth it is only about 17%. That's a bit strange, it seems like we look at the inside of an even larger planet. Some think early in the solar system's history Mercury was struck by something one-sixth of its mass and several thousand kilometers across. The impact would have stripped away much of the original crust and mantle and just left most of its core. Also, probably Mercury originated from further out than the solar system, so it looks like this planet had some very bad days. And a rough life anyway. Some craters on it are multi-ringed impact basins, hundreds of kilometers across. Mercurian craters look a tiny bit different from craters on our moon as the debris created covers a smaller area. It is because of Mercury's stronger surface gravity. The largest known crater is Caloris Basin, with a diameter of 1550 kilometers. It probably created massive lava eruptions and left a concentric ring a wall over two kilometers tall around it. Exactly on the other side of the planet there is a weird terrain which the astronomers called weird terrain. It could either be due to the shock wave going through the planet or the debris out of the crater fell back on the planet here. That must have been an awesome firework. Regarding Mercury's far future, some simulations show that due to some orbital resonance with Jupiter, Mercury's orbit might become so eccentric that there is a 1% chance that the planet will collide with Venus within the next 5 billion years. Mercury likes traveling. Reaching Mercury from Earth is difficult because it orbits so much closer to the Sun than Earth. That means a spacecraft must come closer to the gravity well of the Sun and speed up a lot as Mercury is a lot faster than Earth. Going to Mercury requires more rocket fuel than that required to escape the solar system. It is so difficult that only two space probes have visited so far. Mariner 10 flew by in 1974 and 1975 by using the gravity of Venus to speed up via a slingshot maneuver. It succeeded of mapping less than 45% of the planet's surface. End of March 1975 the probe ran out of fuel and is probably still orbiting the Sun, coming close to Mercury every few months. Then there was the MESSENGER probe. MESSENGER of course stands for Mercury Surface Space Environment Geochemistry and Ranging. <coughs> it was launched in 2004 and reached Mercury in 2011. It orbited Mercury over 4000 times in 4 years, before it ran out of fuel, and crashed into the planet's surface on April 30, 2015, leaving a crater estimated to be 16 meters in diameter. Now soon we will see Mercury up close again, because the European and the Japanese space agency developed a mission to Mercury together recently. It is called BP Colombo after the Italian astronomer that dedicated a lot of his life to the planet. His nickname was Bepi. It was launched in October 2018 and is expected to reach Mercury in 2025. Can't wait to see new images of this metal weird and fast planet again. Now I want to address a special moment. I've had my YouTube channel since 2009 randomly uploading with a couple of viral videos. For the last year or two I've been uploading more regularly. And it looks like I got my first sponsor now. The sponsor along with my awesome Patreon supporters will help me keep this channel going. So you know the situation. You are on an expedition through the South American rainforest and you come across the remains of a past technological civilization. By accident you set off a mechanism that triggers an electromagnetic pulse that fries all of your electronic devices. And you are thrown into a river. Then the engineers show up with a spaceship from a parallel dimension and start to erase all evidence of the civilization. Hastily you try to take notes of the strange writings on the spaceship on a notepad. When everything had disappeared your notebook looks like this. 
and most clues to what happened are lost forever. But wait, there's a solution. The M-Gear MacBook Extreme has real carbon fiber covers, waterproof paper and powerful neodymium magnets that hold the covers together with the help of a metal ballpoint pen. The paper part is replaceable. Oh, and you can have your own logos or designs on the cover. Tried my own print here. By the way, let me know in the comments if you would be interested in more 1415 merch in general, like t-shirts later this year. An official star size comparison t-shirt maybe? Until then you have the option here to create your own design. And if you order with the discount code M1415, you will receive a 10% discount. The link is in the description. I'm sure of course you will find other everyday uses for this gadget rather than the one mentioned. So well, next week we will have a look at Venus. Because I'm on 1415 and the real world is incredible.